For about the past week, I've been experimenting with Iron Sing's Gilded Path, and seriously, it's about time I show you the true power capable from a real Scrap Singer. What's up guys, it's Punchy, and a lot of people are coming to me confused about what the Scrap Singer Path does, and more importantly, is it worth using? In current day Deepwoken, a popular PvP opinion seems to be that Iron Sing fell off, so the mantras are substantially weaker than they used to be on release, leaving a majority of Iron Sing players outclassed by other attunements, and here's what I have to say. If you're expecting Iron Sing's Gilded Path to be the extra damage attunement path, it's not really that. For example, Frostraw's Crystal Path does not apply chill, but it does have bonus damage that's hard to ignore, and the same can be said about the Surge Path and its extra shock damage if it doesn't spread out, and these paths straight up get more damage. But, Scrap Singer isn't all about extra damage, its main focus is defense reduction. With this gold Gilded Path, a lot of players see glowing Gilgamesh swords and get excited excited about the damage, but that's not what it's all about, and I'll talk about this later. Gilded Path, Scrap Singer, allows the player to use their placed metal rods as an armor-stealing resource to be consumed. The basic talent says, by flourishing an enemy, you consume all placed rods they have and siphon their armor to you per rod. Essentially, the more rods you're able to hit on that enemy, you'll be stripping more armor away and adding it onto your own. Landing a flourish consistently is kind of difficult, but there is a solution to this problem. Luckily, with the talent Songs Unforged, Scrap Singer will now activate when you critical or flourish an enemy with rods upon them, and yeah, that makes it easier. After you activate Scrap Singer in any way, you'll be able to proc a few different talents that can be beneficial. First off, the talents Refine and Reuse will work on every single Scrap Singer activation, meaning crits or flourishes, and it gives you defense for playing correctly. For about 14 seconds, a Scrap Singer player will gain multiplicative pen resistance that multiplies by 5% with each rod consumed. That's really, really powerful. The advanced Scrap Singer talent, Reshape and Remold, activates on Scrap Singer procs and buffs the armor damage you deal to your opponent, but I don't think it's that good. If you keep hitting Scrap Singer, your opponent takes 10% more damage to their armor, but you're going to be draining it anyway. Basically, if you're hitting flourishes or critical attacks against enemies that have rods, you're stealing all their armor, gaining a penetration resistance, and you get a buff that helps you deplete all of their armor faster, and that's pretty strong. Now, what what synergies do we have using armor and place rods? Using this path, you won't be dealing insane damage until you strip armor. It's a very noticeable difference if you hit an enemy without armor, and it's very hard to fight against. Since our entire goal is to siphon armor from our targets, how can we do that consistently? As I stated earlier, the Scrap Singer path allows all crit attacks and flourishes on rotted enemies to grant you armor based on how many rods they have, and this is solid, but we can do much more. Talents like Metal Thief will straight up pull armor from enemies using your Iron Sink pulls, and talents like Iron Hug's Metal Absorption will take enemy armor while placing rods on them, so you can take even more armor. If you land Iron Hug, it's a huge cycle of defense reduction, and I love this. Another Iron Sink talent, Heavy Shoulders, reduces the roll speed of enemies that have three or more rods and makes it easier to hit them after. Piercing Metal also works in a similar fashion, letting you deal more armor damage to those with metal rods, and yeah, it's okay. Obvious options for armor siphon like the metal enchants are ridiculously strong using Scrap Singer, and almost every single interaction results in huge chunks of armor draining away from your enemy, and this hurts. If you have these tools, almost every single 1v1 fight will result in you having full armor and your opponent having zero, but so what? What's the point? Here's what I have to say about that. Players without durability are substantially weaker because they have way less resistance coming from their armor, meaning your M1s do more damage, your mantras, or whatever, you just deal more damage. If we want to be specific, we don't deal more damage, but they, you know, they resist it much less. Using a talent like Exposed Durability, we actually can do more damage, 10% bonus, against opponents without armor durability, and that's almost guaranteed if you're running a Siphon-based build, so yeah, pick that up. On the other hand, you can also be using your armor at times with a talent's Metal Eater. So another application of armor durability is an instant cast mantra, which uses armor instead of ether, and it's basically Hungry Flames. The best part of about this is that we always have reserve armor to pull from. Now the strongest talent added in recent times has got to be Iron Sing's Polished Armor. This reads, you receive 10% less damage from attacks if you have over 90% durability. So that's essentially Exoskeleton Resistance that stacks on top of Exoskeleton and every other resistance in the entire game if you have over 90% armor. Sure, 90% seems like a lot, but you're going to be stealing armor with almost every single part of your kit if you're doing this right, and this talent is outstanding 
for tanky players. Okay, it's time we finally revisit our gold Gilgamesh blades. So on Procking Scrap Singer, you can spawn some extra projectiles with the Talent Artisan's blades, which are pretty interesting. In order to deal damage with these gold blades, you must first hit a critical or flourish to proc Scrap Singer, use up two metal rods, and then hit another metal mantra to deal damage, and that's a lot for you to do. Sure, the swords can deal a lot of damage to those without armor and are hard to defend against, but you have to work for them in comparison to a single pull. You have to work for this, and it's not really that free. A very interesting interaction with the Scrap Singer path that I've been using is the Rending Needles Conductor Pull. This Iron Sink path is considered the most slept on in my opinion because I rarely see it at play, and on the placement of 5 metal rods, you add a conductor rod that counters elemental mantras and reflects their status, but it will absorb the other rods. What's fun about this path is that with Conductor's Cable, another talent, placing a conductor rod will steal some armor from that target. So instead of having more rods on you, you can only have a maximum of 4 rods before it turns into a conductor rod, but you know, placing conductor lets you steal armor consistently. With the Scrap Singer path, even if you place all those rods, you still have to hit a crit or a flourish, and sometimes that won't happen. Using Conductor, you steal less armor, but it's more consistent, and without Conductor, you steal more, but it's less consistent. It's up to you how you do this, but against good players, it's kind of hard to pull off the Scrap Singer procs, so I recommend Conductor against those good players. Anyway, those are my thoughts about this Iron Sink path, and seriously, it's worth checking out. It's less about damage dealing and more about defense shutdown, and that's really fun. As always, make sure to like and subscribe because I'm almost at 65k. Thanks again, it's punching time.